Hey guys, Fix Out here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to remove the gauge cluster from a 1992 to 96 F series or Bronco, and then the 97 uh, Super Duty is like 250s and 350s. Um, it's pretty straightforward, just a couple little bolts here and there, clips. Um, anyways, the first thing you're going to want to do is lower your steering wheel to the lowest position, just like that. And then you can get a flathead screwdriver and just kind of pop these two little trim pieces off here. And then the other side right over here. It's pretty simple. And then your headlight knob, you're going to pull it out and then there's a little slot right there. So what you're going to need to do is get your screwdriver into that slot. I might need to get a smaller screwdriver. And then there's like a little tab in there that you have to press out and then you should be able to just like pull it out like that. Shut the headlights off. <laughs> okay, so now what you need to do is there's one screw here and one on the other side over there. Those are a 7 mil. It's pretty simple. I'm going to pull those guys out and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Got those two screws out. So now what you're going to want to do is turn your key to the on position. Maybe. That's weird. And then put this as far down as you can. Oops. So just putting your e-brake on so the vehicle doesn't roll anywhere. And then it's just as easy as grabbing the top of this, pulling it back. You kind of just have to play around with it. Oops, that's not what I wanted to pull out. <laughs> Oops. Oh, come on, get back in there. Just kind of give it a good yank, and it should just kind of come up like that. And once you've done that, you got this guy here. This is your fuel tank switch. If you have two fuel tanks, if you've just got one, you probably won't have this. So just grab a screwdriver and get underneath this guy if I can. I'm going to unplug this and I'll be right back. I can't do this with one hand. Once you unplug that, that guy, it's as easy as just pulling it up and out. Okay, so now to get the actual gauge cluster itself out, there is one, two way back there, three, four seven millimeter bolts. I'm going to go ahead and pull those out and I'll be right back. Once you get those four screws out, the gauge cluster will be loose. And if you go down in here, there's this little, see that thing that's moving right there? That's the thing that pulls on the cable, that pulls that little red thing right there, here. So you need to disconnect it, it just kind of loops around, and then just below that, you can see the cable right there. Below that, there's the adjuster thing for that, this little white cable, this thing right here. So you're going to want to back that out completely so the cable comes free. And then you'll just pull the cable out with the gauge cluster. So you're going to spin it away from you. Just like a little wheel. You can see where my finger is there. Like a little wheel right there. Should it just spin until the cable comes right out of the adjuster, just like that. Okay, now that that's out of there, you can pull the gauge cluster out. See, this is where that cable comes up to right here. So you can get your steering wheel up a little bit. You should be able to kind of yank that cable. See there's like threads on here that the adjuster goes onto. You just kind of pull it all the way off. But you can see when I pull that and lose that. So yeah, so now you're just gonna wanna tilt this back. And you got a couple electrical connectors back here. Should just be able to just press the two sides in. 
I'm sure if you can see that right there. Just press the side in, and then pull it out. Should be able to. Here, I'm gonna pull these both out, and I will be right back. I actually lied, there's not two, there's three. There's two bigger ones, this guy and this guy, and there's this little tiny one that goes right in the middle here. And then the gray one comes into this one, or no, sorry, the black one goes into that guy, and the gray one goes into this one. Now, if you were just changing a bulb, at this point you'd grab some pliers, or you might be able to get, yeah. And you just pull these out, and switch out your bulb, put it back in, and then put the gauge cluster back into the vehicle. Now with mine, the reason I'm pulling mine out is this piece here, like the piece behind the gauges is loose, so it's like moving around and shifting. So I'm, I need to pull this plastic piece off so I can fix that, secure it. So I'm going to show you guys how to pull this off to get access to like the face and like the gauges and stuff. But I'm not going to do that in the truck. I'm going to go do it in my nice warm garage. So I'll be right back once I'm over there. Okay, now that I'm here in my garage, to get this clear cover and then this black piece will come off as well. Off, there is a, there's nine gold screws like this. They are a 732nd bit or socket. So there's one there, one there, one on either side. And there's one bottom here, and one right there, and there's three across the top. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all those, and I'll be right back. With all those out, this clear piece should come right off, just like that. And then this black piece will also come off, just like that. And now you have access to your gauges. So you can clean your gauges. See, this piece, this is my issue here, this thing is sliding around. See these ones are all stuck like they're not going in there. This keeps moving on me so I don't know what my gauges are actually reading. So I'm going to try to re-secure it somehow and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I ended up doing here is just putting a piece of tape there and a piece of tape there. As you can see if I put this black piece back on, maybe, there we go. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Can't see tape anywhere, it all still looks good. And it's not crooked, it's can't move it at all anymore. So we are all good to go. Basically the installation is pretty much the exact same as removal. There's a couple different things. So I'm gonna just go through the ins installation and when I get to the different things, I will make a little clip on how to like how to do the different thing. Um, so yeah, I will be right back. So after you get the gauge cluster back in, I highly recommend starting starting the vehicle, making sure all the gauges are working at this point when you don't have this piece back on, because it makes it easier to take it out if something's not right or blah, blah, blah. Um, the one thing that was different though was this little guy down here. You can see there the, that's that cable that connects to this little orange thing. So you, the different thing is you're gonna have to readjust it. So you're gonna put it in park, make sure it's all the way in park, and then spin the knob, I can find it. This little knob right here, you're gonna spin it towards you. When you spin it towards you, it's gonna be pulling the thing back. So you're gonna have to put it Probably about there on the P. And then let's reverse, neutral, let's drive to one. Okay, so. Oh, and a thing that I completely forgot to mention, your fuel pump, your fuel tank switch here, you're going to want to pull that out of this piece, or just put that piece back on, and plug it back in. If you do not do this, the truck's computer won't know which fuel pump, like which fuel tank it's taking fuel from. So like the, the butterfly valve that controls that, 
will fuck up. I don't know. All I know is that when I was making this video, I didn't plug that back in because I thought, oh, it'll start, okay? And my truck just started to sputter, it was shaking a lot, and sometimes it didn't even start. So make sure you plug this back in. And now we're going to go ahead and fire it up. My neutral safety sitch is way fucked up, so there's probably going to be a video for that soon. But yeah. Holy crap. Oh, fuck it, let's just put it in neutral. That's not neutral, that's worse. And she fires right up. Okay. Pin gauge is working good. Low pressure gauge is good. Fuel tank switch, see if the gauge moves. Moved a little bit. Both my tanks are full right now, so it's not going to move that much. You can see it does move just a tiny bit. Um, yeah, so, and then you can't really see it. The odometer's working good too. Go ahead and put it back in park. But uh, yeah, so there you go. Now, we're gonna shut her back off. Put the gear shifter all the way down. And then shut the key off again. Now you're gonna wanna unplug this guy again. See if I can do this with one hand here. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'll be right back once I get that unplugged. Okay, so that goes off. And actually I forgot to mention, to get this little cable back in for the gear selector, I did have to pull the bottom piece off. So it's here, this thing. It's not that hard, it's literally, there's one screw there, one screw there, and then the top is just held on by clips. Yeah, I got a little switch in mine because I used to have pod lights on the front. <laughs> um, from here, it's pretty straightforward. You're going to want to screw this. If you did take this out of this panel, you're going to want to screw it back into there. Just like that. You're going to want to screw that back into there, and then you kind of just shimmy this behind the steering wheel. You're gonna put your steering wheel all the way down again. Shimmy it behind the steering wheel, get it in there, plug this in, your headlight knob, and then the bottom piece, and these two screws here and there. And then those, these two little trim pieces. Yeah, that's basically it. It's pretty simple. I will see you guys in the next video. I'll see you later.